Hey everyone, welcome back to Epic Tomorrows. It's now my great pleasure to welcome Blair Taylor, the director of and also an instructor with the Institute for Social Ecology based in Vermont, which was founded by Murray Bookchin, or at least co-founded by Murray Bookchin. The ISC recently ran an introduction to social ecology course, which I thoroughly enjoyed, and it's kind of deepened my understanding of um, history of protest and revolution and given me some practical ideas as well for organizing, which I hope I will be able to put into practice. Um, Blair has a PhD in political science from the New School for Social Research based in New York. He's specialized in political theory and American politics. Blair is a prol prolific scholar, author and activist. He has received many scholarships and awards. Um, and his political writings have been published in many journals and anthologies. He has also held various teaching positions in America and also in Europe, which we'll touch on a little bit later. Um, most notably for the purposes of today's chat, I'd just like to particularly mention this book, um, The Next Revolution, uh, collected some collected essays of Murray Bookchin, which Blair co-edited and also co-wrote the introduction to um, it's really good. This is this is the main my sort of main reference for Bookchin's work. Actually, I haven't read much else apart from some of the suggested texts on the course. Um, yeah, Blair has had many experience, um, many years of experience with organising as well, practical organising, including against the WTO in Seattle, which I'd like to talk about in a bit, and being involved with the Occupy movement. And he currently organises is with the West Sound Democratic. Socialists of America. So yeah, thanks so much for joining us. Um, thanks for having me. Great pleasure. Um, first of all, I'd just like to ask quite a simple or ostensibly simple question of uh, how you first arrived at social ecology and, uh, and communalism from a general academic background in politics, or was it through was it through a more academic background or through your practical experience of activism and organizing that you first came to Bookchin's ideas and ideas around social ecology? Um, I got to radical politics more just through my own experience and then, you know, found social ecology uh, later. But essentially, I mean, I got politicized through, um, you know, the, the punk rock scene and hardcore okay. scene. It was very politicized and my own experience of you know, just um, fighting neo-Nazis in the music scene, uh, being a skateboarder, coming into d daily conflict with uh, cops and private property that, you know, okay. funneled toward punk rock, punk rock to Noam Chomsky, anarchism, et cetera. But it was in college that I, um, I had an environmental politics professor. I was also very involved and inspired by at that moment in the late 90s, the Earth First movement. You know, I lived oh, yeah. in Washington state, the Evergreen state, and we had a lot of forest defense here. Oh, yeah. And so, um, I was a big fan of that, and I was a vegetarian, um, still am. So the critique of anthropocentrism was a big part of that. Anyway, I had this professor who um, mentioned the book Defending the Earth, the debate between Dave Foreman of Earth First and Murray Bookchin. And I read it, and I was like blown away. He just demolishes all these ideas, and I, I really agreed with him. And then I looked at some other books, more, more some of his polemical works, like um, Social versus Lifestyle Anarchism, which I was very engaged in the anarchist movement. And those resonated uh, very much with my critiques, I guess, of... The kind of anarchist and like activist milieu. So uh, I saved up some money and uh, in the summer of 2000, which was just after the Seattle WTO demonstrations, which I spent like a year organizing around, um, I went out to the Institute for Social Ecology for the month long when we had a physical campus in Vermont, which we no longer do. Um, and we, we did a month long uh, course, summer school really, called Ecology and Community, which was just like 60 people from around the globe really spending, you know, 12 hours a day talking about radical politics, radical theory, and swimming in ponds, and wow. hanging out, and listening to lectures with Murray Bookchin, and it was really a fantastic transformative experience, and sure. really became a political and intellectual home, and I have just kept coming back ever since, and then joined the board, and started teaching, and got hired in 2016 um, to roll out the online courses, um, and I, yeah, that's my function now. I'm, I'm the program director for the ISC. Yeah, amazing. Okay, fantastic. Um, there was a lot in there. That's amazing. Um, okay, so we learned on the intro course uh, that Bookchin's communalism, or, or maybe you could say his version of libertarian socialism, is a kind of synthesis of elements of both anarchist and communist thought or praxis. Um, I wonder if you could kind of 
humor me and 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 uh, kind of put your teaching hat on for a minute and explain it's more for the audience's benefit um, why communalism is not simply anarchism and or or and is also not status communism. Um, is there a simple, concise way of explaining how communalism doctrines, communalism differs from both anarchism and communism? Um, perhaps with reference to his own back, uh, his own history in those traditions, um, is there a kind of quite a simple way of it or concise way of explaining that? Do you think, like imagining that you have an audience of perhaps communists and and anarchists, can it be said in quite a polite sort of way? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think those were really the the traditions and the audiences that Murray was trying to speak to. He was he was okay. very concerned with trying to create a new kind of um, politics of the left that really built on the insights of those two, you know, the main two traditions of the radical left, Marxism and anarchism, but also transcending them. So I would say, you know, from the Marxist tradition, which he spent, you know, a good chunk of his life in until the 1940s, was a um, you know, a red diaper baby, grew up in the socialist milieu of New York City, and then basically broke with it over Stalinism and the increasingly obvious authoritarianism on the one hand, and also his own um, disillusionment with the labor movement. He was a labor organizer, uh, I believe in the 40s, and basically he saw that the, the, the working class, the industrial working class was not becoming more and more in conflict with capitalism, but was becoming more and more integrated into it and less critical of it. So he started looking for different energies. So from the 40s, 50s on, he started working within the kind of anarchist tradition as something he thought might offer some different, um, you know, theoretical, conceptual, political tools. And he identified as an anarchist until the late 90s, from the 50s to late 90s. So from there, he really um, drew on this ethical critique of capitalism, not just like a economistic critique that he thought, you know, was was kind of central to the Marxian vision that, you know, we're not just all going to get ground down into dust by capitalism and almost automatically, scientifically, objectively become radicalized and see our objective interest in overthrowing it. There was too many mediating factors he thought Marx left out as much as he had a lot of respect for that. So he was trying to um, avoid the authoritarianism of, of the Marxist and communist left while while accepting much of its um, critical analysis of the problems of capitalism, just not of how it was going to go away. Yeah. And then the anarchist respect for you know, um, individual subjectivity, for freedom, um, critique of the state, et cetera, as like an appendage of the, the ruling class. So he wanted to um, supplement these though with what he thought was the, the, the lost treasure of the revolutionary tradition to use Hannah Arendt's words, um, that they had both kind of not spent enough time looking at the forms of freedom, which is a very strong through line through his work going back to the 1960s, which put him in conflict with both anarchists and Marxists. He really wanted to inject a, a, a ethos of direct democracy into the radical left and not just an ethos, but he really saw it as the institutional form the radical left had been missing, was staring it in the face, going back all the way to 1871. I'm wearing my Paris oh, wow. Commune sweatshirt today. It was uh, the 150th anniversary last week, which happens to also be my birthday. Oh, wow. Um, but uh, he really thought that this, this, this council popular assembly forum where people came together, deliberated and made decisions to, uh, to run society themselves in an unmediated way and in an anti-capitalist way was really something that was missed by Marxists in favor of their dictatorship of the proletariat and anarchists with their distrust of democracy, of institutional forms and their kind of valorization of the individual. So communalism really is a, it's an anti-capitalist directly democratic politics that seeks to empower people uh, by transforming politics from something that is done to them by politicians, elites in the state to something they do themselves, which just means essentially, um, you know, controlling the world around them, having an input into it. Um, so it's, it's a different orientation towards politics, I would say. Okay, great. Thanks a lot for that.